I love this question. I love it to bits because um, it doesn't fit into the formulas. It doesn't fit into the formulas. And yet, it clearly deals with concepts that we're supposed to understand. So the question is, well, do we understand them? Okay. So let me ask you this. What does it mean for a hyperbola to be rectangular? Like, what defines that? Like, it comes to the name, right? Rectangular, what's at right angles? The, the asymptotes, right? So I need to understand something about the asymptotes of this, and that will enable me to prove that the, the hyperbola is rectangular, okay? So how do I go about doing that? Well, how do I go about doing it here? How do I arrive at the asymptotes of this case? You let y be the Good, okay, so you saw, I had to go through all this algebra, but it wasn't like cause just for the laws. Like I was trying to get to something that I could apply a limit to. Right? What's what is the subject and I have it as a function of x, right? Relation of x. Then I can say, well, as x approaches from here, now what's gonna happen? Okay. Now that only tells you one piece of the puzzle when you have a look at this, because let's try it out. Here's an equation, right? I can make y the subject of that. It's not difficult at all. Okay? I guess I need to get all the y's on one side and everything else over the other side. Yes? So let's do that. I see two terms with y in them and two terms without. So let's just sort them out, right? I'm getting this. Are you happy with that? That looks okay. Nothing too dramatic at that point. Now in order to make y the subject to disentangle it from all that other x garbage that's there, right? I clearly need to factorize here, right? Now just stop for a moment. What have I done so far? I have rearranged some terms in the equation. I'm about to factorize. Like this is not rocket science. But the point is, I know to do this if I conceptually understand the direction I'm going in. The algebra looks completely different versus what I was doing here. But I am going towards the same goal. Do you understand? Like, do you see how this is testing conceptual understanding versus, oh, but where is my plus or minus? There's no plus or minus. There's nothing squared, right? It's the same process, but we're in very different courts. Okay. So what I've got here is just one step away. There you go. Why is a function of x? Actually, in fact, it is a function of x. This guy is not just a rectangular hyperbola, it's also a function as well. It's one to one. What was the point of making one of the subject? Why, why, why did I want to do that? To find it, one step back, how do I find the asymptote of this? I take the limit as x approaches infinity, right? So as x approaches infinity, have a look at these four terms that you've got over here. Do we agree that this two and this minus one become Insignificant, they become trivial because when you compare them to infinity, who cares what they're going to do? <coughs> you have three lots of some enormous number divided by two lots of the same enormous number. So clearly, you have a ratio happening here, right? You just get three on two. It's just the constant. Like three million on two million is about three on two, and <coughs> three Google on two Google is about three on two, right? Well, I mean, it's about because of these little things that are off, right? So now I know. I have uh, this is x approaching infinity, right? This is a horizontal asymptote, is it not? Y equals three on two. So now, because my point is to graph this. Eventually. You didn't find the oh, other one. Y equals three on two oh, is, is the. Oops, I need another line. Yeah. Is the horizontal? You see how close you are. Make x the subject. Okay, so now I've got one asymptote, but of course, rectangular means you need to know both asymptotes. That's okay. That's all right. Just come back, come back, and instead of making y the subject to find a horizontal asymptote, you make x the subject, and after almost an identical sort of rearrangement, you're going to get a very, very similar fraction. In fact, you're going to get this. You get Can't you just look at it and say it can't be 1 over 2? Can't you just look at it? Answer. No, no, you cannot. Unless you would like me to give you zero. All right, now I'm almost there, right? What do I do with this? What's the point? What's the point? What do I do with that? I take the limit, right? The limit as x approaches, as y approaches infinity, right? Is x is equal to, come on, tell me. It's one, one over two. It's a half, that's a vertical line. It's this vertical line. And it looks to me like they're at right angles. <laughs>